legislation. I mean, their names. Uh, plus, I, I don't show the mechanics of it. I don't quite understand. Would you well, explain it to me? Yeah, sure. Um, I think that what you're getting at, because you made this question, that you asked this question at our award meeting a few months back, um, is you're highlighting the fact that if I got into office, I would be a freshman legislator. And that is true. But I look at some of the new legislators that have come in and made an impact. People like Brendan Boyle, people like Josh Shapiro, people like Kenyatta Johnson, and others. And the reason they're able to make an impact is because they go up there and people want to know where can we build coalitions with this person. And I would leverage the fact that I'm, I'd be the first new legislator in this district in 25 years to work together, to build coalitions, and I would introduce legislation because I believe if legislation is meaningful, then it will get through a committee. Specifically, what would you, I mean, how do you introduce legislation? What are the mechanics? What do you have to do first? I think you've already answered your question, question. got an answer, but Matt, do you want to give a quick response? My question. What you do is you talk with a person who suggests the legislation. You talk to your staff person, you come up with language, you go back and forth and back and forth until you get what this person and what you think are the best possible kinds of language to get where you want to go. Then there is an uh, institution, uh, agency of the General Assembly called the Lawyers Reference Bureau where we elect the chair of that Lawyers Reference Bureau. We submit our language to the Lawyers Reference Bureau. They key it into the right code. They tell you if it's contradicting something, if we need to repeal. The, the bill comes out. You ask people to be co-sponsors. It gets then goes to a committee, and you start working with the chair and the members of the committee to try and get it passed out of the committee. This is what I did, for instance, for a bill that has to do with forbidding people, forbidding anybody from putting subcutaneous chips in, under the skin of anybody who cannot give full consent. The Republican chair of the committee where that bill went, and I have had a great conversation, he is going to report that bill out, and we are going to see it pass the House. I work with Republicans all the time. I like to work with Republicans on privacy issues because they are very good and I work with them on divestment issues, and we're going to see a bill come out of the Senate that I worked on in the House that is gonna keep our public money from going to terror sponsoring and genocide sponsoring countries because I work with the Senate on issues that are important to this district. Privacy issues, that's really interesting. Can we just sure. go back? Take the next question. <laughs> I just, I've asked people, just introduce yourself. Sure. You I'm Bill West. Right. I've uh, been a resident of the 182nd since 1979. And I'm very interested in the issue of health care. Um, as you know, with the passage of the bill in Washington, the implementation of the law now goes to the states. And I think we have a very serious problem in Pennsylvania. And there are two issues that, that are in Harrisburg right now that I'm hoping that you can address. One is the adult basic program. Uh, which is a state-run program which is funded by the Blue Cross Blue Shield Associations as part of their uh, charitable obligation. Uh, they are not funding this after the end of this year, and 40,000 people uh, who are very poor uh, but don't qualify for Medicaid will be off the rolls at the end of this year if nothing is done in Harrisburg. And the second is uh, has to do with rate regulation and health insurance. Um, uh, Pennsylvania has the poorest uh, powers for regulation uh, of health insurance rates of any state in the union. Uh, there, this is also an issue that's before Harrisburg right now. I mean, uh, what do you two uh, propose to do with this? Greg, Greg, why don't you take that first then? Sure, and I would like to respond to what Babette said real quick first. Uh, number one, I find it very interesting that privacy is something that's important to you because something that's definitely private is a person's sexuality. And you made it very clear last, a couple weeks ago, 
that that's not something that you respect by publicly mocking my sexuality at a public fundraising event in front of several people. Secondly, um, when you talk about your, your great knowledge about how you get a bill to become law, according to your own website, 1996 was the last time, this was Bill Clinton's first term, still Bill Clinton's first term in office, 1996 was the last time that you authored a piece of legislation that actually became law. I know you co-sponsor a lot of things, but we need a person from this district that's not just going to co-sponsor, but is actually going to lead. As for Bill's question, healthcare, I strongly support House Bill 1660, which would revolutionize healthcare in our Commonwealth. It would bring single payer healthcare here. And what that would do is it would ease the burden on employers. It would retrain our health insurance workers to implement the new system. Our 12.5 million citizens are a formidable bargaining force for the pharmaceutical companies. We would actually restore the emergency room to actually dealing with emergencies. It would reduce personal bankruptcies that result as health, uh, from healthcare crises. It would reduce administrative costs and it would curb defensive medicine. This is the kind of bill, this is the kind of legislation that we need, that we need to fight for, and if you send me to Harrisburg, not only will I support it, but I will go to the communities where there's, where there's opposition. I will hold town hall meetings, and I will talk to the people there and get them to convince their legislators that this is what's best for Pennsylvania. The problem that Bill talks about with the adult basic is very serious very serious. I have been corresponding with the Insurance Commission, with Blue Cross, with the governor to try and find a solution to this. We are all very concerned about this across the state, uh, particularly people from, from areas where there are a lot of folks already in poverty who cannot afford regular health insurance. The um, problem of single payer, or the challenge of single payer, the House bill number, which is 1660, I am a co-sponsor. I am a very strong advocate for single payer. And I am also on a bill and have just uh, been in a press conference talking about how we can structure our infrastructure here, our bureaucracy in Pennsylvania, so that we can take advantage of every single federal dollar that comes down with this new uh, federal health bill. I expect to see that go through the House and the Senate and get signed, maybe changed in small detail, but I expect us to see, to, to be, Pennsylvania to be, a leader in this for the country as we were in children's health care. When we started the children's health care program, which was adopted by the federal government and by many other states. Health care is an enormous problem, I, especially for the small businesses that I just spoke of. I'm looking for relief so that we can have a booming small business climate. I think that healthcare will take us very far in that direction, and I keep working a great challenge. I keep working until it gets solved.